Welcome to the Heroic Investing Show. As first responders, we risk our lives every day. Our financial security is under attack. Our pensions are in a state of emergency. A single on-duty incident can alter or erase our earning potential instantly and forever. We are the heroes of society. We are self-reliant and we need to take care of our own financial future. The Heroic Investing Show is our toolkit of business and investing tactics on our mission to financial freedom. Hello and welcome to Episode 166 of the Heroic Investing Show. Heroic Investing is a podcast for first responders, members of the military, veterans, and anyone looking to improve their financial future and gain some freedom with their time. We teach America's heroes how to build passive income, build their startup business, and safely grow wealth through real estate and other alternative investments. My name is Gary Pinkerton, and I co-host this show with Jason Hartman. On this show, we're going to talk to a client and good friend of mine, a guy with a great story and a lot of positive energy, and I think it's a perfect way to start out 2019. And in fact, he gives us some advice and some uh, good points to help us turn 2019 into a great year. Well, let me first uh, introduce who he is. So our guest today is Nev Kragulovich. Kragulovich is not an easy last name. So Nev says, hey, just have everybody call me Nev K. And we appreciate that because you should try his last name. <laughs> so Nev originally came from Belgrade, Serbia. He came to the United States with $3,500 in his pocket. I mean, it's a true rags to riches first generation American story. And, you know, through real estate investing, he became financially independent. Uh, he's also started some businesses. He's been a syndicator. He's looked into multifamily properties. He still continues to hold his buy and hold properties. He's a longtime listener of the Creating Wealth Show. He's an author, speaker, investor, and entrepreneur. And, you know, his mission is to help others learn how to invest and preserve their wealth. And when I told him that was the purpose of this show, he was pretty excited to come on board. So I think you'll uh, you'll see that enthusiasm. You'll gain uh, some really good value. And he also uh, makes some recommendations for the 2019 to make it a better year for you. But also, you know, he's written quite a few books, done a lot of seminars. He's a great teacher, clearly. Uh, and he'll point you in the direction of some of those books and make some recommendations for you if you want to learn more uh, about what we talk about on this episode. So I'm very blessed to have uh, had people like Nev and, and many more that are going to follow him this year come on the show, and uh, I think they add great value. So without further ado, let's uh, let's get to the interview with my close friend, Nev K. I think you're going to really enjoy the conversation here with Nevin. Uh, Nevin's a dear friend and a client of mine. He lives up in the Northeast, as I mentioned in the introduction. I think, you know, Nevin brings – some amazing qualities to our audience. Specifically, he's an entrepreneur. He's running several different businesses and starts one every time it seems like I talk to him. And he's also a real estate investor. So I think there's a tremendous amount to learn. And he's got an incredible background, you know, about where he grew up and, and how he is where he is today. So happy new year. Happy 2019 to everybody. Thanks for joining us again for another great season. And uh, most importantly, Nevin, thanks to you for joining our audience and spending a few minutes with us. Thank you very much, Gary, for having me on the podcast. It is absolutely my honor. Happy New Year to all the listeners and to you as well. And uh, let's make 2019 the most prosperous and most successful year ever. Sounds great. So, you know, you and I met through a mutual friend uh, who is providing turnkey properties across the U.S. and my co-host here, uh, Jason Hartman, on on the Heroic Investing Show. Let's back up even further. Let's reel it all the way back to Nevin. Tell us about your background. Where were you born and uh, how did you end up where you are? So I was born and raised in Belgrade, Yugoslavia, now Serbia. When I turned 18, my mother, in collusion with my sister, uh, yes, I say collusion because collusion. I think they planned it really well. <laughs> there was a good cop, bad cop thing happening, but they have convinced me to come to the United States on the premises to learn English and obtain college degree from United States. And I was running with some rough crowd. I, I grew up in a very poor household. I grew up in a country that was filled with embargo I mean, hyperinflation was one of the top three ranked in the world up until this point that is recorded history. You know, no food, uh, scarcity when it comes to electricity, money, 
heat, you name it, we didn't have it. So I started running with some rough crowd, and I think my mother did that to really attempt to save my life in many ways. And so I came here, I got my bachelor's in business, went on to get my master's in business. I followed everything the mainstream media told me to do, invested, well, I thought I was investing, I was really speculating in a market, and I lost everything, every penny, every even the borrowed money. I was deeply in debt, and I decided to throw everything away, all the mainstream media stuff, all the traditional education stuff, and started going on my own, getting mentors who have done what it is I wanted to do, and started learning from people like Robert Kiyosaki and Jason Hartman, and right, like all these different people that were doing things I wanted to do, and I started investing in real estate one by one, eventually got myself out of debt, became financially independent a few years back, you know, wrote a book about it that came out in 2018, and, you know, started a business of teaching people how to become financially independent, how to be able to retire early, you know, started a real estate syndication business and continue investing. So keeping very busy. So what year was it that you lost everything? That was 2008. Okay. I had, yeah, I mean, I was, I was, you know, watching CNBC religiously. Susie Orman was my goddess. At the time, you know, I mean, I subscribed to everything uh-huh. uh, that they said to do. You know, when they said buy, I bought. When they said sell, I sold. But I never stopped to think, why yeah. would I do such a thing? Does so it make a, sense? Yeah. So there's a lot of people out there who had the same experience that you and I did. And, you know, thankfully, I didn't lose more than half. <laughs> you know, I got some <laughs> of it back. Uh, but I learned the same lesson you did. It scared me, right? So I was, you know, I was at a place in in my life where I didn't want that to happen again. You lost a tremendous amount and made that same decision. There's a lot of other people out there that didn't make that decision. What what do you think the difference is? Yeah, I've actually met quite a few folks in, uh, you know, they're waiting for something to happen. I don't know what that something is. I think it's the fear that is preventing us from doing things and A great mentor of mine, Joel Bauer, says, you know, it's okay to feel fear. It's okay to be petrified. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to feel whatever it is to come. But don't let it shut you down. Don't let it stop you in your tracks. You know, decide what it is you want to do and just go for it. Take the lessons that you learn. Do I think that I'm bulletproof? Absolutely not. But I am learning every single day. You know, every day I go and connect with people that are doing things that are different. I listen to different opinions and I keep doing my thing and keep evaluating if it's working. And I'm not afraid to say I've made an error. Let me fix this. Let's go and shift things so that it makes sense. But it's really about taking action. And for me, the future is greater than the past. And uh, I don't know. It's Living in the past, looking in the rearview mirror, it will never get me to where I want to go. So you're right. Yeah, you, know, you can't drive that way. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a huge NASCAR fan, which is a little yeah. bit odd. But I blame my a very good friend of mine who was my boss a few years ago, and the fact that I grew up in the Midwest. Anyway, I don't want to get off on that tangent. But they do have rearview mirrors in those cars, and people who drive looking in the rearview mirror don't have to do that for often, to, for very long, because they end up seeing the guy in the front of the car afterwards. You know, you just you can't do that. That's a great analogy. You have to play to win, not to not lose. You know, and so you change your strategy completely. And yeah. you know, when was your first? So a lot of a lot of your new strategy is real estate investing. And so when was the first property that you bought? So I bought the first property. So in 2008, I lived in California. Of course, everything crashed. California was first to go. And I moved to Arizona at that time. And I spent a good two years really just learning. And I knew I wanted to get into real estate, but I I thought I was in real estate back in 05, 06, 07. But I was in REITs. I was in paper assets. And I didn't realize the difference of physical investment and full control of an asset versus a paper asset that you have no control over. So I learned the difference. That was a big thing. And I went out there and, you know, I started to look in Phoenix. By this point, I mean, it was decimated. People were losing. Everybody was petrified. And I remembered 
you know, a handful of the key things, and they say Buffett, but it wasn't Buffett. I am trying to remember who exactly said it, you know, when they said when there's blood in the streets, Mm -hmm. get greedy. And I mean, there was blood everywhere. And I said, this is it. This is my entry point. This is ground zero. This is where we go. So I started to look for, you know, things that I could afford and condos and single family is what I could afford. And I started to look at different areas and I wasn't very familiar with Phoenix because I just moved there, got with a couple of realtors. And I remember Robert Kiyosaki and Donald Trump, who wasn't a president at the time, they were just investors, have talked about Biltmore area in Phoenix. And I said, all right, they said Biltmore, they're buying Biltmore. Nev is buying in Biltmore as well. So I went in Biltmore and I bought a condo for the first time and found a, a management agency connected with them. And that was my first investment. And then second investment was a year later in uh, Surprise, Arizona. And then after that, it just took off. Yeah. And so now fast forward to where you are, uh, yeah. where you live, what you're doing and with your business, what you're doing. So I live in Providence, Rhode Island right now, and Mm -hmm. I moved here a few years back, and I just wanted a change of scenery. It got Mm -hmm. too hot in Arizona for me. Since then, have sold off my single family investments and decided to get into multifamily. So I own two multifamily properties that I mostly self-manage following Jason's formula and following some of my own things that I have picked up over yeah. 20 years of property management for others. So it's a, it's a combination deal of things. And so that's kind of where I'm looking at doing. I like combination. I like the combination portfolio of single family and multifamily for different reasons. Uh, single family really for me is appreciates quicker. You can't commoditize it. It's very spread out. So it does give you a lot of different and cool things you can do with it. I like multifamily because it reduces the risk. When you have a single family, when a tenant leaves, you're 100% vacant. So it's Mm -hmm. either 100% vacant or 100% occupied. You know, with something like a fourplex or up, you reduce that vacancy rates. So right. there's that piece yeah. that exists with it that you can do stuff with, but typically you get a little bit higher turnover, right? And so, yeah. so there, there's multiplicity of things that you can do. Where I am right now is really looking to get into some mobile parks, uh, looking at apartment investing as well, doing some syndication deals with accredited investors. So folks that have money, but that don't necessarily have time or experience because Real estate investing, especially when it gets into apartments and mobile homes and stuff, it turns into a business. Yeah. And it's not just a true passive investing piece. Yeah. And so this gives an opportunity of folks who are wanting a bit more hands off diversify a portfolio to be able to get into some properties that they don't necessarily want to get into. They don't want to get into operational pieces. They don't want to get into finding the deals, you know, pulling the money and doing all of that stuff. They just want to put in money and be able to get, you know, 8 to 15% plus return on their investment. And so that's one of the things that I'm doing. And like I have mentioned earlier, you know, I also created a business teaching people how to invest, how to think about money, how to preserve their wealth, you know, really teaching folks the lessons that I have learned that have helped me to turn things around. I have guest uh, speakers as well. They go in and teach on different strategies of, you know, how to trade in futures and Forex and options and how to read the charts and how to get into real estate. So we really start taking money, investing, finance, business to a whole new level. And it's really my dream is to build that as a number one place where people can go to learn everything about money and just really get education that doesn't exist in schools. You know, we don't teach this. You know, I have an MBA, I have a bachelor's of business, and I assure you, none of this has been taught in Mm -hmm. school. You know, we're taught how to be good employees. They give you a piece of paper and then you go out and and hopefully you land in either in a good company with a great mentor or you find great mentors or you learn the hard way of you crash and burn and you pick up and you go from there. So, yeah, 
Yeah, so that that is that's tremendous. I I agree with you on single family and multi. I mean, eventually one day you have to scale. I mean, it is possible to scale in single families, but you know, Warren Buffett famously said that if I could buy a few hundred thousand homes and make that work, yes. I would do it. I just don't know how yeah. to do it, right? So, I mean, I, I my wife Sue and I are at you know like thirty units, and we find it very challenging to imagine scaling much beyond this uh, with because just the number of LLCs, the number of bank accounts, the number of yeah. property managers, you know, it's, it's becoming a challenge for us to go go beyond that. So I'm doing like you are and and looking for mentors in the in a mobile home park and the in the multifamily world. You know, there's some great people. You're in, you're in, traveling in such amazing circles. You know, I've uh, it had a great 2018 and I look forward to a great 2019. And and I've come across uh, some very very uh, great you know, people I, I count on as mentors and friends now, like my buddy Craig Horton, who's got a bunch of multifamily properties that has been in his family for generations in the Northwest. You know, Joel Fairless and Danny Randazzo and uh, Dave Zook and Michael mm-hmm. Blanc and you know Michael Becker, all these amazing guys. Yeah. But I've uh, my buddy Lane Bean, who's been on this show, and uh, and Tom Burns, a good friend of, of Robert Kiyosaki's. So just some some great people that I wanted to pay tribute to on our first show of 2019. So I appreciate you letting me go through that. But they're just great people that are in your circle. But I think your idea of bringing education to that uh, on a website and you know and personal mentoring and things like that. I mean that's just a very righteous goal you have, and I look forward to seeing that come come to fruition. Make sure you reinforce that at the end of our show if you would. That's really good. You know, on the single family side, one one comment I wanted to make is there's an ability to have a different exit strategy with a single family home. You know, so Absolutely. like, you know, Sue and I are selling a property that we kind of bought wrong in uh, in Oklahoma yeah. City. It was a brand new property. It was overpriced for the market at the time. They had overbuilt there. So the mm. occupancies, or the vacancies were pretty high and it just wasn't we just didn't do our due diligence and didn't do a great job in purchasing that one so but we have the opportunity and we're selling it next week to somebody who's living in it right and you can't do that very easily with a fourplex you could do it in new york city with a fourplex but almost nowhere else in the country does it make sense for somebody to live in a property that's that big right so so it's a nice exit strategy for one like that but but it just doesn't scale yeah so the, the single family so that's that's one of the strategies right you can sell it right out you can owner finance i mean there's there's so many things you can do with it yeah. you can option it out you know you can the things that i'm also looking to get into with some partners as well is assisted living i think ah, that nice. is going to be yeah. assisted living is going to be untapped gold for next sure 15 to 20 years and so I'm waiting for these, you know, McMansions, as they call them, because they're going to go down in value. And the reason for that is that because people don't want to go into it. You know, people yeah. are aging, so they're selling them out. The younger population doesn't have money and they don't want that big house, right? Like the tiny house is all the rage nowadays. I, I personally love tiny houses. So my goal is that, you know, I'm waiting for those puppies to go on a sale of a lifetime to go buy as many as I can. And then convert every single one of them into assisted living, into, you know, uh, micro apartments and micro loft units to yeah. be able to rent out to students, young professionals, because I think where the future is really going, I don't know, sadly enough, I don't know that owning and buying assets is going to be happening for generations to come. And that's a very scary and sad piece. You know, I look at a things like Uber and Lyft, for example, more yeah. and more sharing you know, economy. Yeah. yeah. And I, I work very closely, you know, with a lot of college age population. So these are the people that are eventually going to graduate and become working yeah. professionals. You know, that's where they are. You know, I have recently gone in to look at a phone. You can't even buy a phone anymore. You can only lease it now. <laughs> um, you know, I used to say for years, you won't be able to buy TV soon enough because cable is dying out. And in order to keep you, they're going to get you on a plan where to have a cable, they're going to gift you a TV. So TV is not going to be owned. The ownership component is just not going to exist. It's not going to happen with cars. It's not going to happen with homes. And so I think for folks that are listening to your podcast and similar podcasts, they're listening to folks that you have uh, mentioned. Brad Sumrock is also another of the people that you haven't mentioned that is also out there doing some amazing things. Folks that get into it right now and able to buy some of the investments, solid investments, are going to be a handful of folks that are going to own assets 
because everybody else is going to become so comfortable with just leasing and renting that that is the only thing that is going to end up existing. And obviously, that's just my thinking. I don't have a crystal ball, but that's just sure. looking at it. That's where I feel very certain that that's kind of what we're heading into. You know, I believe similar to Uber, you know, the Uber for homes, of course, is Airbnb and the similar websites. Uh, so we're already teaching ourselves that, you know, the beauty and flexibility of having a home wherever you go, right? It doesn't yeah. have to be your home. So yeah. it, it, it's a great point. I think there will always be that portion of society that wants to own things, but I think it's going to be a smaller portion. And I, I agree with you that it provides quite an opportunity because someone will own them. Hopefully we don't go to a place where the state owns them. We're in trouble if we get there. But, you know, I think it's going to be individuals who are owning them and the land under them. They're just going to be wealthy individuals who are business minded. And so thinking of that, let's do a little transition. So you have a website, you have a plan to do more kind of education and, and syndication in the future. Yes. Who is your kind of ideal client or the person that you like best to talk to? And how do we get them your direction? For syndication, and this is not my rules. This is uh, this is sure. a government rules. Accredited. So for right. syndication, yeah. you have to be accredited <laughs> investor. There is an opportunity to become part of my network, which I call the uh, global network capital. And you know, becoming part of the network, you're able to get some education. You're able to become part of the club. And at that point, you actually could be a sophisticated or accredited investor to allow you sure. to invest with it. So. Those are really with the folks that actually have some money. Mm -hmm. When I say some money, I'm not talking $500, right? Like you're going to have to have $25,000, $50,000 that you're able to invest in a deal. It's going to be illiquid because real estate is very much illiquid. And, you know, the money is sort of growing and, you, you know, you get paid on, on a consistent basis. But that's really for folks that have some money aside. They might be invested through 401k or IRA. Uh, they might be having money in CDs or saving accounts, doing nothing, losing value every day that are looking really for ways to be able to, you know, let's create some passive income so that they can create income to cover the living expenses and be able to do whatever it is that they want to do and also learn something in a process of doing things. Even, you know, if they want to start their own, heck, go for it, do your thing. And I'm happy to teach folks. The second type of client is really the folks that don't necessarily qualify to be sophisticated or accredited investors to be able to invest in the syndication deal. And they are really the folks who are looking to how do I get started? You know, how do I how do I eliminate bad debts? You know, what is even bad debt? There's so many folks with student loans that are drowning in it that, you know, want to figure out a way of like, I keep paying but the darn thing keeps going up, not down. <laughs> how do I solve for that? So those are some of the things that I teach folks. How do you use, strategically use debt to actually play in the favor and follow things? You know, how to connect with people like you and Patrick and start sort of creating your own bank? And what are some of the strategies that folks can do with that? Um, so those are really the people that are saying, I want to go out there. I want to learn, you know, the, you asked me about fear earlier. Why is it that people are not going in and doing things, right? Like they got burned, they stayed away from the fire. Well, the fire can burn a house. It can destroy this, you know, the state. I mean, ask people in California, it can destroy everything in its path, but it could also provide heat. It could also, you know, purify your water. It could also feed you. You got to learn how to use this. And for me, the number one investment everybody and anybody should be taking in is investing in financial education, yeah. right? Your number one asset is your brain. Your number one commodity is your time. And we're wasting time doing things that don't really matter, spending money on things that don't really count, that are depreciating in value as opposed to buying assets and investing in our future by educating ourselves, by listening to the free podcast, by buying books, right? Go yeah. out there and do stuff for very low amount of money to be able to shift how you think about it, what things mean, and then you can go out there and do it. Doing something is scary only when you don't know how to do it. Yeah. I love skiing and, you know, but when I teach people, I never take them on a freaking double diamond. They're going to stand there. They're going to look down the hill. They're going to sit back on a gondola and will never ski again. Or if they go down, they'll break something. 
Right. You know, you start on a bunny slope and you go and once you get comfortable, you get onto something, right? You, you get with people that have done what it is that you want to do and then you follow in their footsteps. It sounds so simple. It's yeah. a simple formula, right? It's <laughs> it a is. Simple you're right. Formula. It is. You know, but and sadly what we, you know, Jim Rohn, I'm a huge fan of Jim Rohn. And, Likewise. And, yeah. You know, the late Jim Rohn, one of his most famous quotes is that you're the sum total of the five people that you spend the most time around, right? Yes. Similar to what you just said, or it's a component of it. Yes. That you get around people that you want to be like, that you want to emulate, and you do what they do, right? And you follow them. And it also means that you're not standing at the water cooler complaining about what the market just did to your world. You're not around those people anymore. You're around yeah. people who are in the direction where you want to go. I'm glad you said that because, you know, if I had one piece of advice for folks for 2019, you know, if, if people are setting goals and I hope that they're doing that, you know, stop complaining. Yeah. Stop complaining. That's it. Right. Just recently, actually, January 1, the, the book went live and it's my my book. It's a re-edited book that I just added a whole bunch of stuff to it and it's available on Amazon, The Recipes for Perpetual Success. But I always talk about your brain is absolutely amazing. When you complain, when you focus on things that go wrong, guess what? You tell to the universe, Mr. Universe, keep bringing me more of what goes wrong. So stop complaining. Look at things that are going right and look at what can you do to make things better. You know, stay away from the water cooler. It's not helping you any. All it's doing, it's really supporting the, the bad habits and bad, you know, limiting beliefs. Find a network of people who are actually doing things and get busy. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> well said, my friend. You know, you were talking about I thought that I was in real estate, but I was in REITs. I was in paper assets, you know, and that reminds me of, you know, a recommendation of mine. I think I might have done this on the show when, it, when his book first came out, but it's to go get Patrick Donahoe's book, Heads I Win, Tails You Lose. I know, Nevin, that you've read it, but in there in like chapter seven, I think it's in there and again in chapter 10 is a, is a pretty fascinating analogy of growing wealth as if it's a pyramid of wealth. And there's these different tiers. And in each tier, you could have, you know, the most basic bottom foundation is savings and protection, right? And then you're in direct investing where you own things, some things directly like homes. And then you could be in a syndication. And then at the top, you're in kind of the paper asset version, the speculation world. And real estate is in all of those upper levels, right? Mm -hmm. But your involvement in the real estate is completely different. And when I hear you talk about, you know, start on the bunny hill, Right. You're talking about maybe direct investing. It's possible you could start in syndication and be just fine. But I think you'll still not learn some of those lessons that it's important to yeah. learn. Like if somebody's young, my biggest recommendation to them, you know, about how do I get started is I tell them, you know, use that personal that ability you have for that home starter loan. Right. Those really good deals that you can get on that first loan oh, yes. and use it to buy your investment. And they say, but you're not allowed to do that. And I say you can if it's a duplex live in half of it. And then you yep. can't help but learn a whole lot about renting because it's your next door neighbor and you're going to be a manager. You're going to learn so much. So I think you give that up if you go, if you just leap immediately to syndication and certainly if you go to paper assets, but yeah. where you are on the pyramid, it's not about what asset class you're in. It's about your involvement in it, right? Mm -hmm. and, yep. and how much ownership you're taking for it. So yep. I thought that was a really good parallel to what you talked about. Yep. I'm a huge believer and clapped to your, your comment there about just not complaining. Um, you know, what you feed your mind is the oh. most important thing you can do in life and feeding it complaints is just uh, keeping you wallowed, mired in, in what you're in today. So I, I think that is one of the best pieces of advice ever given on my show. So Nev, Nev uh, as, as you. we get close to wrap it up here, I've, we've just been chatting away. Let's talk about You'd mentioned before the show that you wanted to offer something to the to the audience. You want, and then yeah. please talk about your website again, real quick. Yeah, you know, I really am grateful to be on the Heroic Investing Podcast because I'm a huge believer in what the first responders and veterans and military and police and fire people and all of that folks that are you know part of the audience are doing, and I'm very grateful for everything that you guys have done and are doing and will continue to do. You know, I'm always grateful when EMT has successfully transported me to ER, and it happened a couple of times. <laughs> oh so gosh. thank you to the folks that have done that and, uh, you know, have uh, uh, very much uh, saved me in the process. And so I wanted to create really a special gift to be able to give to the audience. If folks are interested to get it, you know, the easiest way for me to do it is, you know, just through email and connect. I enjoy email. 
So if folks want to email me, it's nev, N-E-V, on podcast at gmail.com. So nev on podcast at gmail.com. Send me an email. You will get an automatic reply directly from me. I will likely respond and connect with you as well. But you will get, I have uh, written a very small piece. It's only a handful of pages called uh, Five Tips for Busy Professionals. And it's just really something to get your juices flowing of like, what are some of the things you should consider when you're thinking about investing? Uh, you know, it's, it, those are sort of my thoughts and tips. There's one more special gift that I wanted to put in. I do understand that a lot of people have loans. A lot of people have bad debt. And so for years, people have been using my bad debt elimination plan. And I have also included that as a gift. It's a workbook. It's a very sort of straightforward, simple to follow implement things. You know, I have, gosh, well over hundreds of testimonials from people thanking me that it has helped them eliminate their debt and start sort of, you know, getting on their path. Because what I hear from a lot of people is saying, you know, I really want to get into investing, but I just, I can't even qualify for freaking loans, nonetheless have money for it. So let's start eliminating some of this debt. Let's start reducing it. And when you borrow, borrow for assets, You know, like Gary said, buy a duplex, buy a large home and freaking Airbnb, a spare bedroom. Who cares? You know, get into it, get started, do something. And so that would be that would be really the best thing is, you know, sending email nav on podcast at gmail dot com. Get gifts. If folks are interested to learn more about one deal away and it's actually number one deal away dot com is my education business where folks can learn just about everything on money and you know, if you're dead set on investing but don't want to do it and you just want somebody to hold your hand, Global Network Capital, we offer debt and equity financing. We explain what all that is. Uh, we teach folks step by step sort of what it is that we do, how we do it, so that you very much get involved. And the one thing that Global Network Capital does that no other syndication, well, I know of two other syndications that do this. Even once we refinance, once you're an investor with us, you're an investor for life. So that means we'll actually keep paying dividends even when you take all of your money away. Awesome. So that's something that very few people are doing. That's wonderful. Well, Nev, thank you so much for uh, spending over 30 minutes with my audience. That's awesome. <laughs> greatly, Sorry, greatly guys. appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's awesome. The ones that break the 30 minute mark means that they were good podcasts. So thanks, my friend. I treasure you as a client and, uh, you know, best in 2019. Look forward to, to catching up again. Thank you very much. I appreciate all the work we have done together, and I appreciate your mentorship and leadership in the community. Thank awesome. you very much. Take care. Thank you so much for listening. Please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes. Be sure to check out the show's specific website and our general website, HartmanMedia.com, for appropriate disclaimers and terms of service. Remember that guest opinions are their own. And if you require specific legal or tax advice or advice in any other specialized area, please consult an appropriate professional. And we also very much appreciate you reviewing the show. Please go to iTunes or Stitcher Radio or whatever platform you're using and write a review for the show. We would very much appreciate that. And be sure to make it official and subscribe so you do not miss any episodes. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode.